Hello, my name is Sofer and this is the Volvo EX30 Twin Performance, which means that you can tow up to 1,600 kilos. And if you have the rear wheel drive, you will also be able to tow 1,600 kilos. But if you have the smaller battery, 1,000 kilos is uh, the maximum for you. And I wanted to know, how, what, what, how does the car behave when you tow a trailer? So I went ahead and I have rented one, as you can see here. Since I have a tow hook on my car, uh, I think it's perfect for me to try it out. And there are two things that I want to find out in this video. The car is not that big. We have uh, towed with larger EVs before, or I have. And it hasn't really been noticeable that you have something in the back because the cars themselves are so heavy. But this car have a weight of 1,980 kilos, I think it was. Oh, that's too bad for me. I didn't have the exact number. I can write it down below here, what uh, the weight of this car is. And which means that it is much lighter than, for example, the EX30, uh, EX40, sorry, all these names, EX40 that I have been do, uh, trying uh, to tra uh, tow with before. And the other one is what kind of systems will deactivate themselves when you have a trailer connected to the car. So just a quick uh, mention about the trailer. This is the largest trailer that I can tow with my driver license in Sweden. And it, uh, the weight currently is 310 kilos, but it has a total weight of 1000 kilos, which is kind of the limit here in Sweden. So I can tow 1100 at the most, so 1000 is uh, on the limit. but. And that means that I could basically fill it up with 700 kilos of uh, stuff. But just today I want to see uh, the systems and I have a plan to uh, rent uh, another caravan uh, that is uh, quite heavier. I can't remember right now and get another driver so we can see what the car actually can perform when we do more than uh, 300 kilos but for now i just wanted to see what can the car do and this is some quick and easy video so let's start with that okay so let's start the car and uh, right now we can definitely see that uh, the icon for the lane assist uh, lane assist aid or what it's called lane keeping aid is off uh, I haven't turned that off, it has been turned off completely uh, by its own. I haven't done anything, I haven't put the car in a trailer mode, I haven't even been able to find a trailer mode. Uh, let's go for trip info and reset that one so we have something, we can do some re uh, consumption figures as well. Uh, uh, I have heard a rumor that the adaptive cruise control doesn't work when you uh, tow. ACC unavailable might just be low speed exactly it might just be because of that so let's start driving and I will get out of the city and uh, we will uh, uh, try that again I think but uh, uh, no lane keeping aid so if you don't like the lane keeping aid just hook up a trailer to it I said I want to know how the car handled since it's smaller uh, you can really feel that you have something behind you uh, it's much more shakiness right now than it was before the trailer. And uh, even if it's only 310 kilos, uh, it's, just, it's still very noticeable. Then you have the focus on thingy, hate it. Uh, but now we are coming up uh, to a bit larger road. So if I would go for that ACC unavailable, unavailable. My God, I can't use any not even a normal cruise control when I have a trailer behind. Is it really that bad? Really Volvo? Why have you done this for me? So we're coming up to 80 here now. And I want, the 80 is the speed limit for a trailer in Sweden. So I want to stick to 80. This is what I want to go. ACC unavailable. Wow. That is nothing but stupid. It is when you have a trailer and you really need to follow the speed limit uh, that may not be as uh, the rest of the traffic where you really want a cruise control. What's the point of this? 
so stupid. So you have no lane keeping aid and you have no cruise control. I know other car manufacturers does this as well. And I can understand I drove the Neo EL7 once uh, with a trailer and that one also, that one had a trailer mode uh, and you activated it and then you uh, didn't have many of the systems, uh, uh, safety systems. And one of those systems that you had in the EL7 was that uh, you uh, could not, uh, it, it has air suspension. So uh, the air suspension stopped uh, working uh, when you were in trailer mode. And I can understand that because otherwise the car goes up and down, uh, could be uh, some bad for uh, the trailer. Uh, but here, I don't see the point at all. What makes this car... I don't know. You have a good idea why uh, cruise control is not uh, possible to use when you have a trailer hooked to your car. Because I don't. Like, now I'm basically done with the video. This was what I wanted to know. Uh, but I thought we would go for... Uh, another drive here to just uh, figure out some consumption and uh, I think I would uh, will go the same route uh, without the trailer afterwards so we get uh, a number to compare to but otherwise would just be a number uh, so let's go for uh, some kilometers but uh, yeah no lane keeping assist no active cruise control or no cruise control at all ACC unavailable and there is no trailer mode so the car recognizes that there is something behind the car and will stop with these systems as well. I must say that comfort is not as good as it used to be. Uh, as I said it's much more shaky now but that is common with any car really when you are towing uh, and we soon above this here we get a straight line and I thought uh, we would uh, do some testing of the power because, to be honest, I don't feel I lack any form of power at all. And sure, I have the uh, twin motor performance with 315 kilowatts or 428 horsepower. So I shouldn't just because I have 300 kilos on the tow bar. But I still want to find out and too bad it came a car over there. Maybe we can play a little anytime. But anyway, no one behind me. That's good. Uh, this is not something yet you usually do. Zero, and if I... Ooh! Yep, we can still go, we can still go. No problems at all. No problems at all with uh, power output. Uh, oh, we can stop. Uh, we can stop uh, uh, a few uh, kilometers in, in front here and uh, take a look at some of the settings. I want to see if uh, how much more are uh, disabled other than the lane keeping aid and the ACC. Okay, so I have stopped now and I don't know how much I've been driving. Let's go for car status, trip info. Uh, I've been going 19.3 kilometers with an average speed of 53.6 kilometers per hour. Uh, 24.5, yeah, you can really notice that there is something behind. Uh, I'm usually around uh, 20 just above 20 20 21 something like that now i'm 24.5 just by going 70 basically all the way uh, let's uh, go out of here and go into settings we go to driving um, uh, yeah that one is active but doesn't really matter because we can't uh, activate them and uh, driving dynamics, one pillow driving, still active, steering feeling is firm because that's how I like it. He listened, it is off. We can turn it, uh, turn it off. Uh, all wheel drive. Yep, we can turn all wheel drive on. So let's, uh, uh, no reason to keep that. Speed limit warnings, uh, view all. Uh, sound for a new speed limit. Oh, terrible. I don't want that. Lane keeping aid. Completely off. Driver alert is of course on. Let's just turn it off because it's a ha hateful setting. Full wheel collision warning. Rear collision warning is turned off. Blind spot information is turned off. Well, blind spot information? The one in the... Huh. In the mirrors. 
you have this orange bar there. Turned off apparently. Door open opening alert is also off. Oh, door opening alert uh, alerts uh, with passing traffic when leaving the car. Okay. Uh, so that's not the same thing as just opening the doors. It's like if uh, there come a bicycle next to me and I'm about to open my door, uh, there will be a warning. But if I have a trailer, it won't. Uh, also rear cross traffic alert, that makes sense. Uh, so it seems like some of the system, safety systems here are turned off when you have a trailer connected. Uh, but the cruise control is something that really bothers me. I can understand uh, that the adaptive cruise control is turned off. Uh, but I really can't understand why I can't just get a stupid cruise control, a normal cruise control that's not adaptive instead then then all the then I as the driver have to do everything and the car doesn't have to uh, break itself which I guess is the reason why but yeah too bad I wouldn't want to go with the X30 for longer trips now because of that that really that's really disappointing let's go home now and uh, uh, yeah I, Basically done with the video. Let's go home and just see the and consumption. I will do this route again uh, without uh, uh, the. Uh, this is a BMW i4. I have actually ordered a BMW i4 um, that I will have instead of this EX30. And um, I will do the same route again uh, when I left the trailer, so we can compare consumption. Okay, so I've left the trailer now and I'm back where we started our journey. So uh, I took a photo of the uh, uh, consumption, which I think was really good. We drove in total 49.8 ki uh, kilometers. Uh, I made a detour just to get some more uh, kilometers on, uh, on the road so we could have more sample size. And a total consumption of 22.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. 2.28 kilowatt hours per 10 kilometers. I think that's good enough. And we had uh, 53.4 kilometers uh, per hour in average speed. Uh, so I'm okay with those numbers. Uh, so let's now do without the trailer. And ha, I have my adaptive cruise control back. Well, not when I'm standing still here, but uh, that means if we're going to measure something, we need to reset it correctly. There we go. And now we can do this second time without a trailer. And then we end uh, at the trailer where I left it. And we have uh, basically a video. Okay, so now I am back. Here we have the trailer and here we have my car. <clears throat> so let's take a look at both these images then. If we start with the old one, just as refresher, uh, we went 49.8 kilometers and we had a consumption of 22.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But if you take a look at the new one, we went 49.7 kilometers, so 100 meters less. And we had a consumption of 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That is a lot, but we still had a higher average uh, speed without the trailer. Reasonable uh, 58.2 kilowatt uh, uh, kilometers per hour. While I weighed the trailer, it was 53.4. So that's quite a lot. Um, I wouldn't draw any conclusion out of this uh, a real uh, consumption test comparing these two uh, should be done like on uh, the motorway where you can uh, go the same speed all the time uh, this was very flexible and uh, between 50 and 80 km kilometers per hour uh, but still was much more difference than i had expected with this trailer on uh, i mean it weighs 310 kilos so i thought it would be way less but there we have it the big news here is that we cannot use any form of cruise control with the EX30 when we have a trailer hooked up with, to it. That's too bad. Hope you have a good one and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.